Today, what I want to talk about is another kind of trial presentation software called Exhibit View. So I'm going to open up Exhibit View and uh, get right into it. I'm going to give you a quick tour of how the app works and then go over kind of its main functions and then talk about who this is for and kind of where this fits in kind of the trial presentation kind of software uh, market. So let's start out by building a case so you can kind of get a feel for what this is like. I'm going to call this EV demo case, All right? And then uh, I will browse. I'll just put it on my desktop and hit create. Once I do, I'll get a view of kind of the interface, the working interface of Exhibit View. And if you're familiar with trial presentation software, this should look familiar to you. You've got all your exhibits on the left-hand side and you get a preview window on your right-hand side. And so let's start by bringing in some of the exhibits uh, that we kind of been playing around with, uh, some of those JTXs uh, for the past couple of weeks. I'm gonna go with this in that case name copy. And here's the JTX exhibits that are in there. And I'll give it a couple of minutes, not minutes, give it a couple of seconds, already it's in there. And you can see now they're loading. The nice thing about it is it gives you thumbnails if you want to see thumbnails uh, of what the exhibits are. And you can change kind of how that looks by going into the settings. You can make a medium or a larger. Or if you're like me, you just want to see as many exhibits as you want at a time, uh, you can even go to a list mode. The one thing that I do wish is I wish the wish list mode would get even thinner so that I could see even more exhibits at a time. I just want to see, I want to see it like a terminal in the matrix where I could just see as much as possible uh, and get through things faster that way. But this does give you uh, a list so you could see a little bit more at one time. But that's just something that you can change in the preferences. Now let's go back to our presentation tab. Um, so we've got our exhibits on the left hand side, preview window on the right, and our annotation tools on the top. Let's double click on an exhibit um, so we could put it in. You double click, it automatically gets sent uh, into kind of your workspace, which I think is nice, makes it really quick. And it's really nice that it does that because when you turn the projector on, it's a projector on off button. So as soon as I click on an exhibit now, it automatically gets put in not only my workspace, but also on my juror screen that I have over here. So that makes it really nice. If I want to go to a specific page, I can hit control G and go to page five, for example, or you can use these buttons to go left and right advance, or I can use this drop up box to go to any specific page that I want. Once I'm there, I frequently will get to a page and the attorney will ask that I make something big uh, without specifying what uh, part of the exhibit to go to and that's what this button's kind of for. It makes it fit to width so that way you're seeing the top and from here, once the attorney sees that, then you can usually get some more instruction, scroll down and I can use my scroll wheel to go down and get to, let's say I wanted to look at example four. Uh, one kind of interesting thing that's been happening on a couple of the PDFs that I've been working with for this particular case is if you look on my presentation screen. I could see example four squarely in the middle here, but if I look over here on the right hand side to my jury monitor, uh, it's not quite lining up. And so I can mouse over to the other side and then I could scroll up uh, individually to make sure it, it fits exactly where I need it, right? So that's fine, not a huge deal. It happens a couple of times. I've noticed the same thing happen on trial director from time to time. Uh, usually it happens a lot when I switch from fit to height versus fit to width. Whenever I do that, then trial director gets confused sometimes. I notice it a little bit more with this app than trial director, but it's, this isn't the only one that does that. So once I've got the exhibit here, and let's say I wanna start highlighting, I can highlight example four, right? And then we got it there, and we'll see it on the other side as well. Let's say I wanna pick a different color to highlight, say, example three. I can do that by coming down here, and I can use, say, orange here, and then I can use control H, to go back to my highlight tool. So I can either toggle back and forth or I can use some keyboard shortcut cuts, which is nice. A guy like me, I like to use two hands. So I'm keyboard on one hand, mouse on the other. So keyboard shortcuts are, are really, really nice. Um, if I wanna draw something for whatever reason, I can do that. Um, or if I needed to make a circle, make, make it a little bit cleaner than what I've drawn. Or if I wanna make arrows to something, I can do that as well. So all those tools are there. If I wanna undo any of the things that I've drawn, I can undo and go backwards or I can go forward. So the redo button is nice to have there. Or if I just wanna clear everything, there's this button here. I think it's like a squeegee is the icon uh, and I could just clear the exhibit. The nice thing is if you hit that squeegee button again, all these buttons seem to be, a lot of these are toggles. So if I hit it again, it brings back everything that I had. 
so that's nice. Uh, although it didn't give it to me in the width orientation that I had, but I can easily just navigate to that. If I don't like to do things in the fit to width uh, kind of way, I can still use callout. So let's say I wanna look at this table down here. I can use the callout tool to call it out. And I get a nice call out here. Double click to make it go away. Let's say I wanna then call out, see this block of text here, I can do that. And then the interesting thing that happens is sometimes if you have a, a big, call out that you want to do, um, exhibit view will stretch it to fit the four corners of the screen. And so sometimes you get stretched or sometimes you get squished or squished text. It's usually not too bad, but something to kind of keep in mind. So the one thing to remember though is let's say I'm working with an exhibit and I have it set to fit to width, right? And I've drawn some shapes on here. Let's say five ASA is really important. Let's draw that, right? And let's draw another circle over here on 5ASA here. If I wanna erase these circles, there's an eraser tool, but it's not available, it's grayed out. So the one thing that uh, you know, kind of trips people up, I don't know why it, it works this way, but you have to un-go to width and then the eraser button will be available to you and then you can just click on the thing that you wanna erase and all those annotations will go away. And then let's hit clear to clear the exhibit. So then the next thing I'll do is I want to add in a couple of photographs um, so you can see how those kind of work in here because uh, they do something a little bit different in this app than I've seen in a lot of the other apps. And so from this one, what I want to bring in is let's say bring in this photo here and maybe this photo here. Yeah, let's bring in those two. And then I wanted to bring in these two specifically um, even though they're PDFs, All right? So now these exhibits are in here. So now we got photos they're in. Here's another photo. The reason why I wanted to show you guys these is because what I like about what Exhibit View done is it doesn't care if an exhibit is a JPEG, a TIFF, a PDF, uh, or a video file, or an audio file. All those exhibits come in the same folder. A lot of the other apps, they'll, they'll break them out by file type, which I think is a really weird, it makes sense from a programmer's perspective, I think, but from an attorney's perspective, it makes no sense. All I care is what's exhibit 27. I don't care what the file type is, so put them in the same folder, please. Uh, and they've done that here. So I've got, um, these are JPEGs, and here are some PDFs, and there's a PDF of what was a JPEG, right? Uh, and the reason why I wanted to bring in these two is because this is a uh, schematic, a very rough schematic of an accident scene, and here is a photo. Maybe I wanna show those two things at the same time. I can do that. So let's say I want to put this on the right hand side. I'll click and drag it and release it on the right hand side. And this I'll put click and drag and release on the left hand side. Now I've got two things at the same time. Now let's say I want to focus on one more than the other. So let's say I want to focus on the photograph. I can make the right side be dominant by clicking that button. Or if I want to focus on the left hand side, I have the other option to go the other way as well. All right? And then once I'm done, if I want to go back to a 50 50 split, then we can do that there. And then when I'm done with that completely, I can just hit clear and all those exhibits are gone. So that's kind of the basics in getting an exhibit into exhibit view, onto the screen, up for the jurors and doing a little bit of annotation and the most important part, clearing it down. So next what I wanna talk about is ways you can speed up your workflow. Now the one thing that you can't do in exhibit view, I mean, you can go to page by hitting this thing here within an exhibit and you can use this kind of drop up box to jump to a specific page. But when I, as soon as I click on an exhibit, it gets published, which is good because I want speed. I want there to be as little time between when I click something and when something goes up on the screen. But I don't know how to get it to go, let's say I, I wanna go directly to page eight, right? So then I have to hit this first and then hit, I can hit control G eight and I'll get to page eight. But there was kind of two steps there. And so um, that's something that I wish that they would add to this app. I understand that it probably would add some complexity that they're trying to, they probably made a conscious decision that this was the way they would do it. The trial pad kind of works the same way. But the one thing that you can do to speed yourself up is, in this exhibit, as an example, I only have like 25 or 30 kind of exhibits here, but let's say you had 250 or 300, so 10 times that in order of magnitude bigger. Um, how do you make that a little bit more manageable? So let's say we have an expert cross coming up and we have a couple of exhibits that we know that we're going to use with this expert only. What I can do is I can go through and select the exhibit, right click and send it to there. There it appears. Do the same thing with, let's say, let's go to exhibit 12 and do that. Copy to the folder 
And then we'll do the same thing. Let's say we'll add a photograph and that schematic. And we can select both of them and add it to the folder that we want. So now we have a much smaller universe to work with. Uh, so that way when we're working with an expert cross and we want to move really, really quickly and we're not exactly sure what we're going to need, we have everything we will need and nothing that we won't because we've got that all in kind of the main exhibit section. So that's one way that you could speed yourself up by creating these kind of hot doc folders as they call them here. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, now that we've talked about exhibits and photographs, I want to talk about uh, video deposition. So uh, exhibit view lets you impeach uh, with video impeachments on the fly, uh, which is something that TrialPad can't do. And so this is the one place where I feel like TrialPad and Exhibit View are trying to kind of hit the same market, but this is where Exhibit View kind of sets itself apart. It has a separate workspace in here or a tab, a lot of the apps have tabs, uh, called Sync Pro. And what a sync file does is it takes the, the words of the transcript, the page and line information, and marries it to the video and puts them together so that way instead of having to refer to a video by say like hour one minute 45, 38 seconds and 12 frames, you can pull something up by you know page 90, lines 12 through 16. When you get to the Sync Pro window, you're gonna come up to the upper left-hand corner and hit that Add Transcript button. And on this pop-up, you're going to navigate to the location on your computer where that is. And so this is a folder that's kind of like, imagine you get a disc or a download file from your videographer and court reporter who have synced it for you. Uh, and when you look in there, the only DVT file that's there is the one that we're gonna look for. And what's important to note is there's also a media folder in here, and that's how kind of they automatically come. And it's really important that in that media folder are the videos for that deponent, that witness. Exhibit View is gonna be looking for, very specifically uh, for where those videos are, and it's gonna need to have a media folder with videos inside it. So just kind of leave everything kind of how they are, how they came uh, in relationship to each other uh, as they came from the videographer. So double click on that. You can add all this information. You can give their name, let's call it uh, Smith, and then add the date if you wanna add the date or more information in terms of who this person is if you wanna do that. You can add a description if you want and then hit okay. Well, let's say it's, it's during the trial and I hear something that the uh, opposing witness has said that's different than what they said previously. And so what I can do is then I can go to uh, a specific page and line sequence uh, in the deposition and when I'm ready to impeach, I can select the lines that I want to impeach with, right click and hit play. And I'll hit on. Starting at Loyola at your time at North Central, were you, uh, was there any gap, were you working or anything like that? I worked the whole time through school. Okay, we have. Which I don't know if you noticed that, but at the end of that clip, like the beginning of the next section had already started to play, uh, and I'm not sure that the beginning of the question was all that clean either. And so one of the things that you can do is you can trim up the impeachment clips ahead of time. Uh, we can instead create a bookmark. Now what that does is gives us the opportunity to name it, and so we can name it either by giving it like a code number, so like in your outline maybe you have clip 15, and that corresponds to this particular clip, or you can do what I normally like to do, which is to name the clips um, 18 to oh, 918, 09, 18 to 09, 22, and you get to name them by the page and line range that makes it a little bit easier to find. So I can hit OK, and now I have a bookmark clip that I can play instead, and so that way I don't have to hunt and peck for the specific uh, page and line range, but more importantly, I can edit it to make sure it's extra, extra clean. So I'm gonna right click on this bookmark and hit edit. And here there, I have different start and stop buttons. And if I hit the stop button, I can listen to the last, I think, second or maybe two seconds of the clip. North Central, were you, uh, was there any gap? Were you working or anything like that? I worked the whole time through school. Okay, we have, which? So there was like a where, what, so there's like a W for like the next question. And it was really short. So I think I'm gonna go to tenths of a second and trim this down a little bit and give it another listen. North Central, were you, uh, was there any gap? Were you working or anything like that? I worked the whole time through school. Okay, we have. All right, no gap. And right there, I like that. And so now when I'm ready to play this impeachment clip, let me go, go all the way back. We'll set it up as if we were running an actual uh, impeachment. So let's say it's regular cross. We're going to specific pages. Let's go to page 15. I don't know what page 15 is. We're going here. 
we're calling out stuff, we're talking about it, and then I hear the witness say something that's inconsistent with what they said before, then I might say, well, you remember giving your deposition in this case, don't you? Uh, and you lay the foundation and start building up the uh, legal foundation for the prior statement. And while that's happening, you have your hot seater or someone like me uh, can go in and as that uh, foundation is being laid, and the one thing you have to remember is as soon as I double click on this, the video is gonna start playing. I don't know if there's, I don't think there's a setting to change that, but it's gonna start playing, so you have to hit stop right away, otherwise the jury's gonna start hearing the beginning, like this is the videotape deposition of so-and-so. All right, so you wanna hit stop to make sure it's stopped right there, and then they're gonna build it up, and on that day, are these the questions you were asked and the answers that you gave? At that point, I'll turn the projector on, and then right-click and play the bookmark. Central, were you, uh, was there any gap, were you working or anything like that? I worked the whole time through school. Okay, we have. All right, and there it is. And so then, that's good. I'm going to turn the projector off to clear that from the screen. And now I go back to my regular presentation workspace and I'm back on the original document that we were talking about. If I want to clear that, I can also just hit clear and that's gone. So that's kind of the workflow. Created the clip, I edited the clip, and then we went over how to kind of play the clip. Just the final thing to remember is, just don't forget to hit the stop button. And I'm not sure why, but the projector is always kind of like doing weird things as you skip from space to space. So let's say I have it on here. When I go to Sync Pro, the projector's still on and I can turn it off, right? I can play my clip, all right, I'll hit stop and then play the clip. Starting at Loyola and your time at North Central, were you, uh, was there any gap, were you working? But then you can't like turn it, oh, if you turn it okay. off, okay, the clip have... kind of still wants to play, and then it goes back to the other exhibit. So you kind of have to remember the sequence of things and it takes a little bit of practice. And so that's something to keep in mind. The way that like the different spaces work, I'm not sure all the time. It takes a lot of practice and, remember, mem and memory to kind of figure out what's gonna happen once I clear the impeachment clip, but just something to get used to. Uh, I always tell my students that video impeachments are the most difficult thing uh, that I ever have to do in terms of hot seating in a courtroom. So it's something that is definitely worth rehearsing, even if it's something you do all the time. And it's something that I always practice too as I'm getting ready for a trial. So those are my general thoughts uh, on exhibit view. Um, the pricing for it is uh, kind of the last topic that I want to talk about. It's $699, and then after the first year, you have to pay $149 per year for maintenance and updates, things like that. Um, at those prices, it puts it in the trial director and on cue category, uh, even though it bills itself as having like kind of stripped down features. So the spectrum I kind of uh, envision is that you have apps that are like um, trial pad on one end, which is very streamlined, very intuitive, easy to remember and, and easy to use. Um, and that's, I think, $130 these days. It started out at 90, um, but even at $130, I still think it's a good price. Um, and I think Exhibit View, in terms of the features it offers, it's kind of over here somewhere. And on the other end of the spectrum being uh, trial director and on cue and sanction. And so that's kind of the spectrum. Uh, exhibit view is a little bit like on this side uh, of the middle, uh, but the prices are kind of up in, in this range. And so it makes it a little bit hard for me to recommend. Uh, it's not as intuitive as trial pad. If there's something that I had to do video impeachments for, then I would probably reach for something like on cue or, or trial director, especially since all the prices are kind of in the same ballpark. And so that's generally my take on the pricing. I also think that trial director and on cue are both very, very expensive. And I think the prices all need to come down a little bit. So uh, that's just my general take on the software uh, in terms of costs and what kind of the market is doing. If you've used OnQ uh, in a trial, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to get some feedback. That is something that I would love to be able to kind of pick your brain and see what your use case is and what your experiences are. So please let me know. Either send me a message, email me, or feel free to leave something in the comments. Uh, and I'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more about it. If you have any questions about Exhibit View, uh, also I'd love to talk to you guys about that too. Um, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Uh, and I will see you on the next one.